welcome back to the vlog and part 2 of our course vlog here at Danao Golf Club. This is the front nine of this golf course but my back nine and it is starting to drizzle a little bit but the game must go on. So we are starting on this par 4. This fairway slopes from the left to the right. There are trees blocking the right side of this fairway and there is a hazard running down the center of it as well. So hitting this down the left side is very important. As this hole is pretty long as well, giving yourself a good tee shot is very important if you want a good chance at going for this green. For this approach shot, my intention was to be hitting a fade. As you can see, there are bunkers guarding the right side of this green. This is also a pretty long hole, so I'm hitting a pretty long club. So aiming towards the bigger side of this green and just trying to let it feed towards the pin was my aim on this hole. Clearly, my second shot didn't really go exactly as I wanted it to. As I said, I wanted to hit a fade and it just kind of went pretty straight. But as you can see here, I still have a lot of green to work with. I'm actually pin high, just on the left side of course, but I still have a putt. So aiming to the bigger side of the green is never going to be a bad play. Although as you can see here, this putt is definitely not an easy one. Next, we have hole 2 which, contrary to what we just played, is a pretty short par 4 but it's definitely not as easy as the distance seems although it's just a 308 yard par 4. This is a dog leg right par 4. The green is basically there behind the trees and it is a pretty narrow fairway so everything on the right side will kick down that slope and it is quite a bit of a carry if you were to carry it down the right side so you do need to keep this down the left side if you want to be on fairway grass because the fairway is actually, as I just said, pretty tiny on this hole. So even though this is a short hole, this is definitely not an easy hole. As you could see from the previous clip, it is a small fairway. I hit an almost perfect shot, almost on the fairway, but I still ended up just a little bit left as it didn't kick down that hill, so I have a pretty severe downhill lie. What I didn't know, obviously because I don't know this golf course, is that the green here is a massive slope from the left to the right, and obviously with the lie that I'm on, I should have been really aiming towards the left side of this green. From here, it looked like there was a bit of space towards the right side, and it looked like the pin was in the center of the green, but actually the pin was pretty far right. And as you can see, when my ball landed, it just took a massive kick right. So I actually got pretty lucky here because obviously, as I said, I didn't know what it looked like on the right side, but it was actually an OB and I was just short of the OB. As you guys saw, my ball took a massive kick and I didn't really know what was up there. But now you can kind of see from here, it even looks pretty flat. But it was a pretty severe slope from the left to the right. So you definitely need to pay attention to that on this hole because it does not seem as big of a slope as it actually is. Especially from the fairway when you can't see the green. Hole 3 is a par 3, it is pretty severely downhill. I think it was playing about 25 yards downhill, so you do need to trust your distance on this one. That's always something that I think is pretty difficult to do. Just seeing how far or how near something is, you know, obviously depending on if it's an uphill or downhill, and really just trusting whatever club you have decided to go with. Because obviously for 176 yards, I normally would not be hitting a 7 iron. So it does feel a little bit odd. But trusting your shot is obviously always very important in ensuring the best possible chance for you to hit a good shot.
The next hole is hole 4 which is a par 5. It is a dogleg left par 5. Anything past the trees on the right side is OB. And from what I could tell, this fairway is sloping left to right as well. My friend hit it towards the right side and it really kicked very hard right. So I was trying to go towards the left side of this fairway. If I were to play this hole again, I don't think I would actually pull out a driver. Just because a driver is going to be able to run out of fairway on the right side. Whereas if I hit something shorter, I would be more confident and able to just aim towards the center of the fairway. And know that if anything, I'm still not going to run out of fairway and go into the OB. So this shot just wasn't very comfortable at all for me and let's not lie, I just wasn't very focused either on that shot. But I think that either way, I would not choose a driver on this hole again. It is a par 5 but it's not that long that I would need a driver. With my driver, I pulled it and it hit the tree and I ended up being really really short. So now this hole has become even longer for me. So the grass here is cow grass which makes it pretty hard to hit out of. This was basically the longest club that I felt like I could get out of here. Although it might not seem like it, the tree on the left side was in play and as I said just now, the entire right side past those trees are OB. So it is important here to make sure that I hit this ball straight because obviously we don't want to run into the OB on the right side and we don't want to hit that tree on the left side. Although I did a good job of making sure that I did not hit any trees and hit it down the fairway, I still had a really long way to go. I didn't have the best contact because as I said, the grass there was not easy especially to hit a wood out of. So this was as far as I could get it out. It obviously wasn't the second shot's fault. It was more of the drive was bad but I had to try to get as far as possible because the hole was made a lot longer because of my tee shot. So I don't know how much you can tell but basically from this angle, the pin is in front, there's not much room in front of this pin and it looks like it kind of goes uphill past the pin and kind of runs out of green so it doesn't look like there's much green and I am in the rough so basically what was in my mind here was don't hit it over. So let me just tell you that is not a good idea. That is probably the last thing you should be thinking because guess what happened, I hit it short. So this is a perfect example of compiling mistakes after mistakes, exactly what we should not be doing. Hitting the green here was obviously more important than trying to get it super close to the pin. Now I'm leaving myself with another chip versus I should at least be giving myself a chance to putt. But we are not perfect, we all make mistakes so at least I still walked away with a bogey. Let's move on to the next hole. Bunker puppy! Apron puppy! <laughs> hole 5 is a par 4. Again, as we saw in the front 9, it seems like most of the holes here have some kind of slope in which it's leaning towards a certain direction. On this hole, it does look like it's pretty severely right to left. But there is space down the left side for this hole. So for this hole, you can actually aim more towards the center of this fairway. Moving on to the next par 3, this is hole 6 and this par 3 probably has one of the toughest greens on this 9 or on this course in general. So this entire green slopes from the back to the front. So knowing where to land it here is very important and if you land it on the wrong spot, there is a chance that you could put it off the green. Because of today's pin position, we definitely want to aim a little bit more towards the right side of this pin because it will kick left. However, if you were to miss it, you would want to miss it actually more towards the left side because it is almost an impossible putt if you were putting from the right side of this pin. Alright. Go for it, partner. I've got the bogey secured. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? Wow, partner. Hey, we, I, I you are amazing. I, I cannot make it.
so good. <laughs> I cannot make it for lunch. Definitely my best birdie for the day over there on hole 6, a very difficult hole. So we move on to hole 7. On hole 7, I didn't really know what was going on. It just kind of seemed like I needed to hit more towards the right side of this fairway. So I aimed towards the left side of those right palm trees. What I later found out is that there is actually a bunker down the right side. So you do want to aim more towards the left side here. My orange tea, where you always go? <laughs> So you can't see the bunker here but it's basically just right of where I was. I missed it just by maybe less than 5 yards. But I was in a little bit of an odd lie here. The grass was a little bit odd so I was kind of trying to not take a divot on this shot because it felt like it was almost sandy but almost like it would pull the shot so it was kind of hard to determine what it was going to do to the ball. So as you can see here, it was basically just kind of sitting in one of those holes where the grass was different. So I ended up hitting it a little bit too thin, so I was short of the green but left myself in front of the green here with a pretty simple chip. As I said before though, I felt like chipping on this golf course was pretty difficult, so I tried to hit more of a lower style chip here. Hole 8 is another par 4. Similar to many of the other holes on this golf course, it is again another blind hole. It does look like you have to go more towards the right side because there is that little hump down the left side, but it is still a decent distance away. However, I still was aiming towards the right side of this fairway, basically left side of those right trees, and just hitting and hoping that I end up in a good spot. So I think this hole again is going to show you a lot of the struggles that I had on the front line. For this approach shot, it seemed like it was a little bit downhill so I was trying to take a little bit of a smaller shot. Again as I said in the front line as well, some of the greens seemed to be hard and some seemed to be more receptive. So it was hard to judge which one was going to be hard and which one wasn't. Because this one seemed to be a little bit downhill, I was trying to hit this softer and I just didn't really commit to the shot. So I ended up being short because I kind of chunked my second shot. And the same thing happened for this chip. I wasn't sure if it was going to bounce or if it wasn't. And as you can see, this one just released a whole bunch. And I just did not leave myself in a good position on this hole. Especially after a really good tee shot. So it is kind of frustrating when you don't really know what the ball is going to do. But that's just golf and that's just playing in different conditions. It is hard to adapt and sometimes you really can't predict what's going to happen. So you just have to play shot by shot and just try to do your best. So we've reached the last hole on this 9 which is a par 5. You can clearly see the fairway for this shot. It is sloping right to left so you do want to go kind of towards that small tree down the right side and just let the fairway do its own thing. Personally for me, I was trying to hit this as hard as I could because I knew that it's a par 5. It seemed like there was quite a bit of space out there. It seemed like there was nothing that was going to be in the way. So might as well try to hit it hard and see if I can get a chance to go for the green in two. So obviously I didn't know where the green was going to be from the tee box but it was a little bit out of my reach just because this entire hole is also uphill. If I did not have this big slope in front of me, I would have probably just tried to hit a driver and get it even closer to the green because I knew that my 3 would get pretty close but it was not going to be close enough that it was going to get a chance to go on the green. But either way, I knew that it's a par 5 so going on in 2 was more of a bonus than something that I needed to do. As you can see here, I'm in front of the green, it's about 35 yards to the pin but this again was a very tricky pin position because the pin was above a slope Essentially, if you hit it a little bit short, it's going to come all the way down and if you land it above the slope, it's probably going to go a whole ton over. So landing it at a good spot here is important and I basically just wanted to try and give myself a chance for birdie because I knew that this was going to be a tough chip. So I did exactly what I wanted to do, I gave myself a chance for birdie. Unfortunately, it just did not want to drop but it is what it is. 
I still had a very enjoyable day out here at Danau Golf Club and I hope you guys like this video and subscribe to my channel if you did too.